Alrighty guys, welcome to the online programming. So just gonna run you through how most of the programs look online today. So we've got a few examples and a few definitions up here. So refer back to this video if you ever need to figure out what the hell I'm going on about in the programming. So to start with, this is pretty common. So an E4 mom means every four minutes on the minute. So you would start a clock, right? And you you would start a clock at the first working set. So not for your warm ups, your first working set. So that would be here, we've got a back squat, a set of 10, a set of eight, a set of six, and a 75%, as many reps as possible. So we would go start the clock, we would do our set of 10, we would then do a tall plank, five BR means five breaths. Then you would come and do your dumbbell bicep curls. So you would do 10 to 20 reps. So if you can't do 10, it's too heavy. If you can do 20 and you're still cruising, then it's probably too light. Next, the tempo. So we've got T41X1. So on that, I would expect four seconds down on the way down on the squat. And generally it's the eccentric where you're going with gravity is the, the longer one. And when you're fighting gravity, that's your explode. Okay, so that's where squat would look like four, three, two, one, probably another shot, pause, and back up. So four down, one pause, explode up, one second pause. Similar over on this example. You would then do tall plank, dumbbell bicep curls. Now, if you get all of this done in two and a half minutes, you have 90 seconds to rest, and then you do your next set when the timer hits four minutes, okay? And rinse, repeat for the rest. So that covers a lot of what we're looking for. Now, if you do a set of 10, I want you picking a weight that you would ideally do 13 reps with. If I give you 10 grand, I'm like, you finish your set of 10, I'm like, how many more reps could you do? And you're like, ah, oh, maybe six. Well, if I want three, then that bar was too light. If you could have done 16, I wanted you to be at tops 30. So you probably need to be wary. You don't need to do it immediately, but the following week, you wanna add a little bit of weight, depending on the day, so that you can hit three reps for the first set, and then second set, so when you do your set of eight, you would reassess. You'd be like, all right, cool. So I want three in the tank, that means it's about, the most I could do is 11. Six reps with two in the tank means your total is eight reps. So if you're doing a set of six and you only had two reps left in the tank, that is pretty bloody hard. So it's not like you're skipping out on reps. These are these can be very intense as you get more advanced. And when you're beginning, it takes a while to zone in on how far away you are from what you think like you might have in reserve. But that's what I've got an AMRAP for. So if I do 100 kilos for six, my 75% AMRAP, I would do 75 kilos for as many reps as I can. And that gets you a really good idea of how close you were on these other weights. On how, if you ended up doing 20 reps with this weight, chances are what you said was 16 reps, it was actually like 20 reps, and you'll get better at gauging your intensity over time. So same with the dumbbell bicep curls. First set, you'll leave two in the tank, one rep, no reps in the tank. Now, some more complex examples would be, if I gave you a hip thrust, if I gave you four sets of six to 12, you gotta stay within that rep range. You got a T30X, so I haven't listed what happens at the end of the rep, so it'd be three down, two, one, no pause, and straight back up. Your reps in reserve is I want three, then two, so two reps in reserve, then you're gonna repeat those. So I'm not asking you to go one before or even to failure, but you might be, if this two was like, if you're training hard, this two may get a little, may get a little harder as you go through those next sets. But say I got eight reps on this two here, I would then want you guys to do eight and then eight for the following set, okay? And that's a way, another way that we can do that. So if you see an R, that means repeat the last set if you hit the right intensity. So if, you, if you're at six reps in reserve, then you probably need to put the weight up and aim for another two before you repeat the weight. Next, so you would do hip thrust, dumbbell shoulder press. You've got, same deal, eight to 20. Can't do eight, it's too heavy. If you're doing 20, probably go up. 
20x or sometimes when it's not even I'm not too concerned about the tempo sometimes it won't even be there sometimes it's not there uh, reps in reserve three two two zero so that means failure that means technical failure so on a shoulder press it means I'm not using my legs but then I've got a little D here that's a drop set which means you would go and get some lighter dumbbells and you would press them all the way to failure again. It's another good way to pick up the intensity in our training. Then you would have 60 seconds rest and hit the hip thrust again. This is a hypothetical. I don't know if this would actually work in the program or if it's in there off the top of my head, but this is just a way to do it. So you would have your 60 seconds, then go back to hip thrust. So you've got your examples over here. Imam, every minute on the minute. Sometimes it's every three minutes on the minute. So you would have your clock and you'd go 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, as many sets as you can. Uh, and so that helps us moderate our rest and how hard we're working. So you might, you definitely won't be able to lift the heaviest weight you can if you've only got one minute rest. Okay, so I'm, a, lot, a lot of the time I'm not asking you guys to lift as heavy as possible. I'm getting you guys to build strength and get comfortable under the bar while you're fatigued because that has a lot more carryover to like real life training and all the other training we do, rather than just thinking how heavy can I go? Okay, there's a time for that. So tempo, throw on X one, three seconds down, one second pause, explode up, that's the X. Pause or reset at the top of the rep, normally that's where you breathe, when you've got skeletal stacking. So for a squat, it's when I'm here, not, I don't hold, I don't try and hold or breathe in, while, sorry, I do hold my breath, but I don't try and breathe in as I'm setting up for the squat. And wrap as many reps or rounds as possible, normally in the circuits, but as you can see here, also in the squat. Percents, normally percentage of your daily max weight. So up here, so let's say that I chose 75 kilos to do my 10 rep with, just because I thought that that would give me three reps in reserve, right, I would then uh, yeah, I do my eight, so I call that 90, and I do my six, which is a hundred. My 75% AMRAP, I'll end up what I did here. So that's a really good way, as I mentioned, to gauge how hard you're actually working. Okay, when you do your AMRAPs, make sure to put the safety pins up if it is a dangerous exercise, like bench press, squats, anything where that bar could come down on you, put the, put the supports up or get a spot or someone that knows how to spot. So, because that is important, because I don't want you guys saying, oh, I failed my, I failed my bench and I almost died. Like, no, don't, just, it's not worth it. Just get a spot or just rack comfortably if no one's around, okay? So that's for you to consider, but that's our programming in a gist. That should be most of it. If there is anything that I've missed, then shoot me a message and I will follow that up. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy.